In the Kursk region, the Russian army carries out daily attacks on the positions of Ukrainian forces. At the same time, the enemy steps on the same rake as it acts on the basis of incorrect intelligence. As a result, this leads to numerous losses in the ranks of Putin's army. A week after the start of a new counter-offensive in Kursk region, with the aim of driving out Ukrainian forces from there, the enemy is suffering staggering losses, but has not achieved any major successes Forbes reports. During this period, Putin's army only managed to gain a foothold in Pogrebki, but this is very little consolation against the backdrop of heavy losses along the western and northern sides of the Kursk salient. Experts say there is more than one problem here. The fact is that there are not so many roads on the northern and western salients, so the enemy has to attack along the same route. It is also unclear who and how provides information to the Russian army about the location of the Ukrainian armed forces. As a result, all attacks by Putin's army are predictable. This leads to large losses, said the operator of the Ukrainian armed forces drones Kriegsforscher. In a week of fighting in the area of Zeleny Shlyak, he has already counted 88 units of destroyed enemy armored vehicles. Just November the 12th, 11 Russian vehicles from the 51st Airborne Regiment, as well as the 155th and the 810th Marine Brigades of the Russian Armed Forces were destroyed. The enemy attacks every day. The Russians are confronted by forces of the 17th, 41st, 47th and 95th Brigades of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. They meet Putin's army with artillery, mines, drones, tanks and missiles. A striking example of the inaccuracy of the enemy intelligence is the events of November the 7th. On that day, the occupiers from the 810th Brigade in their new BTR-82s were destroyed at close range by Ukrainian defenders. It is possible that the local commanders assured their superiors from above that all roads to Pogrebki were allegedly controlled by Russian forces. It is logical that after such information, the Russian Defense Ministry gave the order to attack the village. However, the occupiers did not control the road and did not even clear this section of the front. In general, deliberate misinformation of the general staff by the command of the 810th Brigade has become a common practice, said Ukrainian Armed Forces serviceman Romanov. By passing false information up their chain of command and then passing false orders back, Russian commanders in Kursk are setting their troops up for bloody tactical failures. This means they are likely to suffer catastrophic losses regardless of the battle's final outcome. The main advantage of the Russians, as it was in all wars, is their numbers. Now in Kursk region, 20 to 30,000 Ukrainian defenders are fighting with 50,000 of Putin Kim's Arya. The most important thing is that the Ukrainian armed forces know about the attacks of the Russian armed forces. They know how, where and when they come. All that is required from the Ukrainian forces is to lay mines, set up artillery, launch drones and wait for a new wave of attacks. Sometimes a counter-offensive by the Russian armed forces results in an enemy armoured personnel carrier with infantry driving very close to Ukrainian tanks which shoot at point blank. One of the Ukrainian drone operators said that the Ukrainian armed forces are very lucky that the Russian armed forces conduct a lot of Benzai attacks. Forbes reports the Kremlin is ready to accept major losses from the Russian armed forces just to regain control of the entire Kursk region by Trump's inauguration. OSINT analyst Kriegsforscher reports that yesterday, November the 11th, under the cover of a smokescreen, the enemy from the 51st Airborne Regiment and the 155th Marine Brigade of the Russian armed forces attacked the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces head on. A total of 18 infantry fighting vehicles, BMDs, armored personnel carriers and the MTLBs, as well as five T-72, T-80 and T-90 tanks were thrown into the battle. All of them were formed into three groups. The Ukrainian armed forces met the enemy with drones and tanks. The battle itself was chaotic and bloody. Putin's army left three tanks and 15 armored vehicles on the battlefield. According to Kriegsforscher, two Ukrainian tank crews, possibly from the 17th Brigade, drove to meet the enemy but missed each other. Four armoured vehicles with Russian infantry drove past them. Only when the landing party began to disembark did the Ukrainian forces notice them and open fire. It is not uncommon for the Ukrainian armed forces to kill many enemy soldiers with a single precision strike. 
This happened last Saturday when 15 soldiers from the 51st Airborne Regiment dismounted. Ukrainian drone operators eliminated every single one of them. Ukrainian defenders also die on the battlefield and not always in the battle itself. Most often the enemy simply shoots those who surrender. Putin is trying with all his might to regain the Kursk region. According to the same Kriegsforscher, one of the elite units of the Russian Federation, the 76th Airborne Division, is currently on its way to Kursk. Former British Prime Minister Liz Truss spent her final days in office in 2022 prepared for Russia to use nuclear weapons on Ukraine. An updated edition of the politician's biography, Out of the Blue, notes that the potential consequences would have affected Britain, which is why crisis meetings were held, among other things. Truss spent hours studying satellite weather data and wind patterns, preparing for radiation poisoning should the Kremlin dictator move to use nuclear weapons, the Times reports. The fears were reportedly based on US intelligence that there was a 50% chance that Russia would deploy tactical nuclear weapons in a war against Ukraine or use a more powerful warhead over the Black Sea. The media also writes that on October the 18th, 2022, when the then UK Defence Secretary Ben Wallace traveled to the United States to discuss a full-scale Russian invasion, US President Joe Biden stated that there was a direct threat of similar actions by Russia if the situation continued to develop along the same scenario it was moving along. Media reported earlier that the war in Ukraine could accidentally escalate into a nuclear conflict, all because of Russia's actions or inactions regarding nuclear weapons near the front. Moreover, Russia's failure to properly secure its nuclear arsenals in the country's west poses a grave danger as Ukraine's desire to strike targets inside Russia increases. Foreign Affairs writes, Ukraine has every right to defend itself in this way, and there is no indication that Ukrainian forces will deliberately target nuclear warhead storage sites. However, with Ukrainian drone strikes already reaching Moscow, it is clear that at least 14 Russian nuclear storage sites are now within range of their drones. The article says, Two of these sites are reportedly located about 150 kilometers from the border with Ukraine. Another five are approximately 250 to 300 kilometers away. These distances are within the range of the advanced missiles that Western allies are transferring to Ukraine and which are still prohibited from striking Russian territory. The media writes that responsibility for the movement of nuclear warheads lies directly with the Russian government. Russia knows that its warheads should not be located near conventional military operations. After Ukraine launched its first drone and missile strikes on Belgorod in the spring of 2023, Russia quickly announced that its Belgorod storage facility no longer contained nuclear warheads, understanding that warheads should not be stored near active combat. In addition, the satellite showed the preparation of the Russian R-30 Bulava nuclear missile. The missile is reportedly one of the components of the nuclear triad, 